Hello friends, welcome to the presentation of my final project for the class of pattern recognition called face recognition using principal component analysis and k-means cluster. We'll go over briefly over the contents of this presentation. It includes the definition of the problem statement, introduction, applications of face recognition, what are eigenfaces, a small description of the principal component analysis, its limitations, a small description of k-means clustering, the performance of the algorithm, future work and conclusion. So my problem statement and the goal that this project is approaching is to solve the problem of the biometric challenge of face recognition using principal component analysis and k-means clustering. The only catch here is in k-means clustering instead of running the algorithm on the original images we will run it on the projected images obtained from principal component analysis. What is face recognition? Face recognition is actually divided into two parts. First is face detection. Now, uh, face detection is something like in a given set of image or in a bigger picture, we identify the part of the picture which represents a human face. Face recognition, on the other hand, is the matching of that identified face with our database and finding who that picture or the face belongs to. As you can see in this image, the face detection identifies the face of Andy Murray, the tennis player, in the bigger picture and then recognizes or identifies the name of the person by comparing from our trained database. Face recognition finds applications in various fields, be it information security or access control like unlocking phones, unlocking computers, law enforcement and social media. For example, in Facebook, when you op upload a picture, it automatically identifies the faces and helps you to tag your friends by identifying who the picture belongs to. What are eigenfaces? Think of the human face as weighted combination of some component or basis faces. Now these basis faces are called eigenfaces. Eigenfaces are nothing but ghostly images as you can see here on the right side of the slide. They are eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of a set of faces. Now we use principal component analysis as one of the primary methods for face recognition. The goal of this analysis is to def define the maximum amount of variance with fewest number of principal components because it is an observed fact that 90% of the total variance is present within 5 to 10% of the features or dimensions. So we convert the human faces into the eigenfaces as defined earlier which is small set of char characteristic feature images. By doing so, we get rid of the redundancy and preserve the variance of small number of coefficients which determine or which are enough to calculate the most or and capture the most important characteristics of the images. In the next identification step, we test picture is projected in the lower dimension vector ob obtained from the principal component analysis and then we compare these projected images of the test and the training sets by calculating the Euclidean distance between them and the one distance that is the closest to the test image is identified as a match and given back as the result. Now we'll go over the principal component analysis steps into detail. First part is to calculate mean face and the zero mean matrix. The mean face is average of all the test faces in our input database. Now the mean is calculated here by uh, dividing the total images with the size of the image and then we calculate the deviation of each image from the mean image. The zero mean matrix is represented in the following way. 
In the second step, we compute the eigenfaces. Eigenfaces is computed by the given formula here. However, our input image is size 50 by 50. So the covariance matrix will come out to be huge by 2500 by 2500. So instead of that, we calculate A transpose into A and then U and V represent the eigenvector for C and L respectively. Now we can calculate, project the image by this formula and next we come to the recognition step. In the recognition step, we start by calculating the zero mean matrix of all the input images. Then we project the eigenvectors. So we project the test set on the eigenvectors derived from the training set. So all these images are projected on the eigenvector that we obtained from the principal component analysis tip and then we calculate phase detection using Euclidean distance. So the Euclidean distance of the projected images to that of the training images is calculated and we select image which is closest to the training set. Although this process has been around for some time, there are certain limitations that have been observed. So if the illumination is not good or there the image is not aligned correctly and there is a lot of background noise or occlusion, principal component analysis is not as accurate. In spite of that, it has presented high accuracy in ideal situations. Now in this project, we also use K-means clustering for classification of image into clusters. Now K-means clustering is a type of unsupervised learning algorithm which is used when you have unlabeled data. It is great for identifying homogeneous groups on basis of certain features. We start comparing the projected images of the test set with that of the training set using the Euclidean distance. We use this algorithm to classify our input data set into two clusters. The natural expectation is these two clusters or classes will represent the two human genders of male and female. Now we just uh, have a quick look on the procedure that we are using here. So first we combine all the test and training images into one set. Then we calculate eigenvectors from the principal on component analysis step and project all images on the vector. Then in the initialization step, we randomly initialize mean and membership matrices. Each image is then mapped to the cluster whose mean is closest by calculating the Euclidean distance. Once this is done, we recalculate the centroids of the cluster and update the mean by this formula. We keep repeating this step until the centroids no longer update, which means we are, have identified the best centers for our clusters. Now let's take a quick demo of the project. Here I want to show the test and the training set. So the training set consists of 100 pictures of 100 different individuals and the test set consists of 200 images, grayscale images, two images per person. So these two images belong to the same person and the training set, the first images belong to the same person. Now let's go to the code. So I have done a comparison study for all the 100 people. Here to test the algorithm, we start with selecting the first person from the test set. Then we find the mean phase by taking av average of all image vectors, convert the mean phase vector to matrix just for displaying purpose and the deviation of each image from the mean is calculated. Then we calculate the covariance matrix and find projections using the covariance matrix. And then we take the test set, project the test set on the eigenvectors obtained from the previous step. And then we do the comparison by calculating Euclidean, Euclidean distance between the projected images obtained from the test set with that of the training set. So here I have just uh, taking the first image from the test set and I'm running the algorithm. 
so hopefully it will return the match face now we can see the algorithm is running here so it and here voila we get the match image as compared to the test image from this result it is observed that even though there are expression changes and certain light changes in the test image it is still able to identify the match image correctly now we go back to our presentation so the i measured the pc performance by calculating recognition rate which is the fraction of images identified correctly upon the total number of images we compare this performance by taking different number of principal components so from 10 to 100 increasing 10 every time now we see the recognition rate increases as we increase the number of principal component but after a certain point around 100 it flattens out so there is no performance gain once we have terminate uh, reach the maximum important number of components so it goes and confirms our understanding that most of the variance is captured by small number of components we also uh, evaluate our k-means clustering algorithm by two cluster ind validation index the first is davis bolding index second is f measure now davis bolding index is an internal evaluation scheme where by the validation of how well the clustering algorithm has been done is made using quantities and features inherent to the data set on the other hand the second algorithm or the second measure called mean phase for f measure is the harmonic mean of precision and recall which gives now higher the value of f measure the better our validation index is and the lower the value of davis bolding index the better our algorithm is so if we take a look at the previous slide here we see the comparison chart of davis bolding index by taking different values of the principal components so when we have uh, the 10 principal components the davis bolding index produ produces the best result and in case of f measure even here we see that with only 10 components we are able to get the highest value for our f measure which results in best performances we take a look at the future work that has been done so uh, our calculation of eigenvectors is one of the most important steps in principal component analysis so we need to find out ways to better identify eigenvectors which will produce better results also uh, with advent of new camera technology we capture other spectrums beside the visible spectrum for example the infrared spectrum and use those images to better identify and overcome the limitations of PCA like bad illumination or background noise. Another area of research is multi or hyperspectral imagery. Here we concurrently capture multiple bands in the electromagnetic spectrum and we also use the spectral curve for various facial tissue to identify, to better identify the faces that we are testing coming to a conclusion we can easily conclude that principal component analysis is a very effective facial recognition algorithm and it keeps only those features which cause maximum variance and hence perform giving a boost in performance of facial recognition and reducing uh, reducing our computation time as we increase the number of principal components the rate of recognition increases but once we have used all of the primary or most important components there is no performance gain by further increasing the number of components also we see from our cluster validity indexes that with only 10 principal components we were able to get the best results from k-means clustering algorithm which again concurs and confirms with our belief that only small number of principal components capture the maximum variance thank you for your time